Well, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Karen and this is Southern Keto 4. And uh, we're actually going to have a little discussion today about my keto journey, kind of where it started, how it's evolved and where we are now. So if you want to kind of get an idea of how a low carbohydrate diet can change and evolve over time, then stick around. We're going to talk about it. All right, so I am absolutely doing this without any notes. So hopefully I won't ramble too much, even though that's kind of my thing. Uh, behind me, you will see that I still have my Christmas tree up, even though it is the middle of January and, uh, you know, no shame in my game. So anyway, uh, if you are a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate you clicking on today's video. Uh, if you are new here, welcome. Uh, again, my name is Karen. I am, uh, these days, uh, following a very, very low carbohydrate, uh, ketogenic kind of a hybrid between ketogenic and carnivore diet. And, uh, I have been at this journey for a little over six years now. At this point in time, I've accomplished a lot. Uh, I have lost at this point about 50 pounds, uh, just, just over 50, like a hair, like 0.8 pounds over 50. And uh, in addition to that, I have reversed or improved, I don't know, a dozen or more health conditions. So we're going to talk about them and I'm going to throw them up on the screen uh, so that I can kind of just mention them to you. Uh, first and foremost, I reversed my type 2 diabetes. Uh, with a rich family history of type 2, I saw a really terrible fate. Uh, so back in 2017, I started checking my fasting sugars, my sugars after meals, and it was a hot mess. Uh, most of the time, my fasting sugars were in the mon like 150s. After meals, I'd reach 300 or more. I never got an A1C, but clearly I was a type 2 diabetic. Uh, at the time, I did not have health insurance, so the idea of doing a bunch of blood work was just not in the cards. Uh, so the determination by my doctor based on my fasting glucose uh, and me bringing in all of my, my blood meter and all of my information, she diagnosed me with type 2 diabetes. I, at that time, was counting calories and looking at uh, different types of options available to me. I kind of went the route of, I just need to lose weight, and I started eating tons of veggies, tons of oatmeal. I was eating oatmeal all the time, non-fat yogurts, you know, low-fat, low-calorie granola bars, like 100-calorie granola bars, and those types of things in an effort to try to lose some weight and hopefully get everything under control. Uh, however, my glucose was still rocky, and I was going through these phases of really intense highs and lows. At the time, I didn't realize that, but what I was realizing is that I would have these uh, bursts of energy, and then I would have these, uh, what were actually hypoglycemic events, where my sugar would drop very, very low, and I'd get lethargic. Uh, I would literally pull over, I, I can't tell you how many times I pulled over into like the Target parking lot, locked my doors, and leaned my seat back to take a nap, uh, or during a lunch break would go out to my car and take a nap. Or in the car line at my kid's elementary school, I would set a little alarm and lean my seat back and take a nap. Uh, so it was, it was something that definitely was impacting my day-to-day -day life. I was tired all the time. Uh, in addition to being type 2 diabetic, um, my blood pressure has always been great. That was never an issue for me. Uh, I've always kind of run like low normal but I did have a very high resting heart rate uh, because I was hovering around 40% body fat uh, at 219 pounds. I was, my, my heart, according to at least what the doctors and the personal trainer who did my body fat caliper tests 
Um, what they explained to me was that my heart was having to work harder to get through my body fat and visceral fat uh, in order to supply oxygen to my body. So my resting heart rate was always over 100. Uh, typically it was between like 105 to 108 uh, is kind of where my mind, that was my resting heart rate. So if I did anything uh, strenuous whatsoever, but if, even like walking around briskly, um, I, I would end up with a heart rate in the 160s, 170s and would get very winded very quickly. Um, so that obviously was, uh, was putting a little bit of stress on my heart that I didn't need. Additionally, I was taking uh, omeprazole for chronic heartburn. I also had car tums, work tums, house tums, purse tums. Uh, I went through probably the equivalent of a bottle of tums every week, if not more. Uh, just absolutely miserable chronic heartburn. It would wake me up in the night and I would have bedside tums. So there was that, and that also has completely resolved. Uh, in addition, lots of gout flares, uh, particularly in my big toe joint on my right foot, and that would have me kind of hobbling around, limping around, which also led to, you know, additional issues as far as uh, soreness and kind of having a, a little bit of a ganked up back for a good period of time, which was only exacerbated by the inflammation in all of my joints. So lots of sciatica that would put me on my butt for weeks at a time and on a heating pad and with salon paws and ibuprofen for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. So aside from the physicality of it, in addition, uh, I was sleeping terribly. I snored. I talked in my sleep. Um, Richard would have to kind of roll me over or nudge me to wake me up uh, because of how badly I was snoring. I would also kind of stop breathing. Um, we never did a sleep study, but it is presumed that I likely had sleep apnea because I would kind of choke a little bit and stop breathing when I was snoring so bad. Uh, additionally, I suffered from severe sleep paralysis uh, where I would have these uh, horrific experiences. Um, not every night, but typically a couple of times a week. And normally when I would have these episodes, uh, they would be back to back. And so I would have a lot of trouble sleeping, a lot of trouble getting rest. And that was brutal. So if nothing else, at least I don't have sleep paralysis anymore. Um, in addition, um, I had cystic acne, um, lots of ingrown hairs. Uh, anytime I would shave, I would end up with ingrown hairs. And that is so strange to me that that's something that just resolved and I didn't have to deal with it anymore. It doesn't matter. I can shave, I can wax, I can do whatever. And I don't end up with cystic acne or ingrown hairs. Uh, additionally, my skin has absolutely improved, not only from the acne, but just as far as, I guess, like suppleness. I feel like my skin is um, softer and healthier and less uh, patchy as far as dry and oily spots. So that's definitely improved um, remarkably. I also have a couple of skin tags that I had uh, in those older days that just vanished. And from what I understand, skin tags are absolutely a part of insulin, insulin resistance. So that really shouldn't be such a shocker for me. Um, I would say Aside from all of these things where my health has clearly improved and likely my longevity has increased, um, one of the biggest things is just emotionally, mentally, how much I have changed. I have gained confidence, uh, part because my, my body has improved, my body composition has improved with losing so much body fat, uh, but additionally, I just feel good. My body feels good. I have energy. I have more exuberance to spend time with my family, with my husband. I mean, you know, I think back, and, and this may be a TMI, but I mean, we've been married for almost 25 years, so hang with me here. Um, but anytime that a woman has children and her body changes, you know, you, you feel so much less confident. 
and it's really difficult to enjoy intimacy without those self-conscious thoughts coming into play and making it more difficult or less fun. And I had a lot of those moments and I, I remember times when we would be intimate and I would become so self-conscious that I would stop and I would go to the bathroom and I would cry because I didn't want him to see my body the way it was. And, you know, it's not that that wasn't fair to him, but it wasn't fair to me to be so miserable and so unhappy in my own skin. Uh, and that that's a big thing that has changed for me is that that confidence in my body. I'm, I'm still not exactly where I want to be, but I'm on my way. And with every improvement I've made, whether it's physically or as far as my health goes, every single one of those improvements has just increased my confidence a little bit more. So there's that. Um, and I, I just can't help but think about six years ago, how I felt and what my future looked like. And now I feel more youthful. I feel more energetic. I feel like I have so much more life in me than I had at that time. And so it's, it's so, I, I hate to think had I not made this change, just how bad I would feel right now. Like how, how bad would it be? I definitely would be on medication. I might would even be on, you know, insulin shots or something. This By this age, my mom was at that point. And is, is that where I would have been? And how would my relationship with my husband have suffered because of my irritability and lack of confidence? How would my relationship with my kids be different because I wouldn't have had the energy to you know, do more with them. And I wouldn't have had the, the, the improvement mentally and emotionally to be more available to them and be a better mom. I, I can't help but be devastated for that version of me that could have had existed. It, it's sad. So, I don't know. Like a, a moment of mourning for that, I guess. Coke Zero. Judge, if you want. Lots of talking. My mouth's dry. Okay. So, now that you are fully aware of the situation, or reminded of the situation, uh, all of those health conditions I improved or reversed by following a ketogenic diet. That said, my version of a ketogenic diet has absolutely evolved over the last six and a half years. When I first started, I was the keto police. Yeah. Uh, so in 2017, um, a ketogenic diet was not as mainstream. There wasn't as much information available. Uh, there definitely weren't products available. So I, the biggest thing that I remember being available on the market were like the mission uh, low carb wraps, like the carb balance wraps. Um, but the groups that I was in on Facebook, uh, so I was on like Keto Connect and Real World Keto and a couple of different ones, like they were very strict and specific about the rules as far as not posting keto foods. And a lot of the people in those groups were very, um, very strict as far as the presentation of keto. So when I first started, I did count net carbs. I limited myself to 20 net carbs, but I was really eating real food. So even though I was doing net carbs, I was deducting fiber from things like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and asparagus. I wasn't using, um, you know, any, any of these, the wraps or the breads or the bars or any of those types of things. So even though it was net carbs, I probably was still as far as total carbs, I was, I was probably still between like 30 and 40 maybe. Um, so it was, it was very, still very, very low carb, total carbs. Um, at the time I did basically what 
the Diet Doctor visual guides uh, talked me into doing, um, which was an excellent way to start. And even today, like when people ask me how to start keto, that's what I send them, is the, the link to the visual guides from Diet Doctor because I think that it is foolproof and really easy to follow as far as like, these are some green foods, these are yellow foods, these are red, don't touch them. And, and that made it, um, I, I think, a lot easier for me to stick to by having this really simple guide to follow. So I had, at the time, lots of meat, lots of eggs. I had some dairy. Um, I surprisingly did not go over the top on dairy, um, but I, I did have meat, eggs, dairy, lots of veggies, and I included um, like nuts, like macadamia nuts, pecans, walnuts, that kind of thing. Um, and so it was a very traditional whole foods ketogenic diet. I did occasionally make myself some like almond flour treats, but I always hated them. So I would try one and not like it and throw them away. So it wasn't something that I did a lot of. So that's an improvement. So over time, things evolved. Um, I, I went from being this very strict version of keto to once I got really comfortable and lost a nice little chunk of weight, it started to slip and it started to get more dirty or lazy kind of keto. I stopped tracking. I started including things like nut butters. Um, I would make more like really rich, uh, um, decadent kind of meals that called for like a lot of cream cheese and a lot of heavy cream and a lot of shredded cheese and things like that. And I started to stall. And it should be no surprise because I really just went kind of crazy um, on things that were very, very high fat and calorically dense. Not saying that calories in, calories out is, uh, is everything, but let's be real. Uh, there's probably some validity to that in, in many ways. Um, but I, I definitely, I stopped seeing progress and I stopped feeling as good. So I decided um, this was... Yeah, it was a couple years in at this point that I would go more strict. So what I started doing was incorporating carnivore days and I would alternate and do a carnivore day, a keto day, a carnivore day, a keto day, and did that for a hot minute um, where I started to see those results again. And the little bit of regain that I had had, I think it was maybe like eight to 10 pounds, of regain, I started dropping that eight to 10 pounds back down by integrating those carnivore days in. Um, and in that way, it was kind of countering those other days where I was including probably a little too much in the way of nuts, nut butters, that kind of thing. Um, after I started incorporating those carnivore days, I did a month long carnivore challenge. Uh, I did for the month of November. I recruited my sister-in-law to join me on that first carnivore challenge for the month. Um, and when I did it, I, um, it was funny because I, I felt really, really good when I removed the carbs. Um, I was very particular at that point with focusing on lots of whole foods, lots of meat, lots of eggs. Um, I did still include dairy, but it was not a huge amount. At that point, I was not putting cream in my coffee or anything. So it was really just a matter of like, if I had some ground beef or something, I might put some, some shredded cheese on it or some sour cream, something like that. So it wasn't over the top. I ended up because I felt so good. Um, I stuck with carnivore for a little over six months, which is actually when I started this channel. I, I was still following a carnivore diet. Um, and, and when I say carnivore, I did still include seasonings and coffee. Um, but aside from that, it was meat, eggs, full fat dairy. And I basically, I made it uh, about six and a half months. I didn't lose a lot of weight. I think I, I really dropped only about five pounds over the course of that time. Um, but I definitely reduced my inflammation and I really reduced my cravings for anything, uh, sweet. So I, I kind of lost my taste for things like blueberries, strawberries, um, even like sweetened iced coffees and things like that. Like I just didn't have any interest in those. 
So that freedom was awesome. But then um, I live in South Carolina, coastal South Carolina. <laughs> we have a lot of agriculture here, uh, a lot of local farmers that I have a, a lot of respect for. And I mean, I come from a farming family. So this area produces, I'm not going to lie, the best locally grown tomatoes on planet Earth. So if ever you are in the Charleston area in the summertime, Freeman Farms on Johns Island has the best Johns Island tomatoes. They are the best tomatoes on the planet. Sometimes they are ugly as thin, but they taste so good. They are the best. So anyway, we were getting into tomato season and I decided to start reincorporating veg. Uh, and when I did, I felt fine. Um, I was able to really identify things that uh, made me feel less good and things that I was like, okay, this is cool, I can have it. Thankfully, I can have cucumbers and I can have tomatoes and I can have onions and I can have peppers and I don't feel remotely bad. That's awesome. Um, and in truth, most veggies I really tolerate pretty well. Um, and unless I have like a ton of some of those cruciferous veggies, I really don't feel any kind of effect. Um, so after I started reintroducing those things, I evolved from originally that strict keto to then a dirty keto to then a carnivore to then more of a ketovore sort of diet. Most days uh, I was limited to about 10 grams total carbs or less. Some days were just completely carnivore, but then some days I might would include some Brussels sprouts or some cucumbers and tomatoes or something like that at one of my meals. Um, so that's something that, uh, really became a sweet spot for me is just uh, something that was easy. It was easy to maintain and um, I, I got to have all of the things that I enjoyed. I had meat, I had eggs, and a little bit of dairy, and I had the handful of veggies that I really loved. Um, and I, I was thankful that those things weren't bothering me, uh, weren't affecting me negatively. Um, so that brings us Kind of to where we are now um sort of i guess a few months ago things started getting tough again um it really got difficult to stick to keto vor which you know isn't the isn't the name of my channel and i started having more and more keto days uh where i was hitting you know closer to 20 grams total carbs and then i started uh just with the stress of a new job um the stress of a new ADHD diagnosis, um, the stress of new antidepressants, and the stress of um, a very long and very slow uh, grieving process as I continue to watch my mother's dementia decline, um, I, I started slipping a little more, a little more, a little more. Uh, so then it became keto days, dirty keto days, and then days where I ate my feelings with a bag of Haribo gummy bears. And I, I have, I don't know. I feel it. You know, I feel that I am not my best. Um, I've been sort of back at it for a couple of weeks, but I feel like part of this evolution uh, in any diet strategy is the, the speed bumps uh, and the roadblocks. And I can't imagine that 42 years old, that for the rest of my life, I'm not gonna hit roadblocks and that I'm not gonna have these difficulties. Um, I do feel like I have now really gotten a handle on myself. Um, I have adjusted really well to my medications. Um, I have adjusted really well to my new job. Um, I have finally gotten that like work home balance back uh, that you kind of lose when you start a new gig like that. And so I feel like I am back in control. Um, so since uh, just prior to the first of the year, I've really kind of had my handle on what my uh, well-being is between mental health, emotional health, physical health, and my diet. Um, going forward, I am really focusing on trying to go back 
to basics. And I have days where I am carnivore still, um, just because a lot of times it's easier. <laughs> it's only a meat and eggs. Like, oh, I don't have to cut up veggies and prep sides and things. That's nice. Uh, so I do that on occasion. Um, but then other days I may have, um, you know, I may have a little bit of veg with both lunch and dinner. And so I might hit somewhere between 10 and 20 carbs total for the day. So I'm not falling in, falling into that, uh, keto vor umbrella. And so it's a hybrid at this point. And right now I'm just trying to stay consistent, at least with that hybrid. So I have carnivore days. I have nice whole foods, keto days. And some days I do have a keto vor day where I'm under 10 grams total carbs. And it seems to be a happy place to be, to have that flexibility of anywhere from zero to 20. And the, the day depends, uh, you know, it depends on the day and depends on what's in my fridge and what's available and how tired I am. Um, I still have goals. Uh, I am about 20 pounds from my absolute goal. Uh, so my, my goal weight, I, I'm five, five and a half. I shrunk. I don't know. I used to be five, six and three quarters, but now I'm five, five and a half. My goal weight is 145 pounds. Um, I feel like I would still be happy, you know, around 150 or so, but 145 is my ultimate goal. And I'm 20 pounds above that right now. I'm 165 and I want to reach my goal this year. I really do. And I want to, it's not just a matter of vanity. I mean, part of it is vanity weight. Like I want to be back down to, to my cute size. Um, but at the same time, I want to, I know that I still am, my body fat is still higher. I know that I also need to develop some more muscle. Uh, I'm middle-aged and I need my muscle to carry me into my older years. Uh, so I need to develop muscle. I need to lose a little bit of weight. And more than all of those things, I want to keep my type two diabetes reversed. Um, I see a lot in my family, um, a lot of health issues. And, you know, my mom had wretchedly controlled type two diabetes for the majority of her adult life. Uh, and here she is now with dementia. She's in stage dementia. And the more I understand, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there are a lot of lifestyle factors that have led to this, but I can't help but feel like that really terribly controlled blood sugar for all of those decades impacted her brain health. My dad is a type two diabetic and he has benign tumors on his liver and has diabetic neuropathy and edema in his limbs. And they've started him on one after another new medication to help with his sugar and his heart health. I mean, the man has an internal defibrillator and pacemaker and it's frustrating to me. Um, my big brother, who was my best friend for the majority of my adolescence and my early twenties, um, he's six years older than me and he was diagnosed a few years ago with type two diabetes. And I wish that he would take some advice from me, but he listens to his doctor and has gone through the route of metformin and then increased metformin. And next week he starts on Manjaro, um, which is, I, I wish that, I wish that he would try some dietary approaches first, but he is currently not game. And once he started on metformin, his cholesterol increased and then he was put on statins and then his A1C increased. It's just, it's a roller coaster when you're trying to manage one thing with meds and then it changes another thing with meds. And so long story short, I guess I'm just saying that I see it all around me in my family. I know what my future could be if I stray from what I'm doing. And so I am choosing myself 
and I'm prioritizing myself. That's the plan going forward. Um, all of this to say 30 minutes now, I've been rambling. I told you that I should have taken notes and that I ramble. Welcome, by the way. If you're new, I ramble a little bit. Um, but I, all this to say that we all evolve and you may start your journey one way and it may fluctuate, it may change, may change for the better, may change for the worse. Um, but all of those experiences will be learning experiences and give you the opportunity to find what's best for you. All of this fluctuation for me has taught me what's best for me. And I am at a place right now where I see it very clearly. And I know the future that, um, that I can secure by following what I know is best for me and my health. Um, for some of you out there, um, this may be carnivore. It may be strict keto. It may be dirty keto. It may just be a low carb diet or a paleo diet. Um, if, if it's vegetarian or vegan, I respect your choice too. But I want you to be flexible as far as really doing some experimentation with yourself and allowing yourself to evolve um, and, and finding your own path to what's gonna bring you wellness. Um, it's nothing is perfect for everybody. We all have to find the method that works best for us, what we can be most consistent with and what makes, uh, makes us feel the best and what we can actually look at objectively and say, this has improved. We can look at the data and say, these have improved. So that's all. Lots of rambling, but be comfortable with evolving. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, I hope that no one gets pissy with my, uh, my channel name because I will have some keto days, some carnivore days, some ketovore days, and it's all part of the practice. So that's all. I'm going to head to work. It was six o'clock in the morning. Love you.